To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. So, what? A, how is your business? What is your business? looking like? And uh, where are you going this year? Um, You are the one in the driver's seat. You are the leader and the leader sets the tone, sets the direction. Uh, So uh, your business really is going to rise or fall based on the energy and the the leadership skills that you bring to bear, whether you are a one person organization or whether you have a team of employees working for you or with you. Or even if you are virtual and your employees and team members and vendors and suppliers and partners are spread all over the globe. Um, So how do you get the best out of everyone and get the best out of yourself and really build the business you need so that you can live the life that you want? Particularly, how do you handle change and how do you learn to build your adaptability muscle? Today's expert is going to help us wrap our brains and our hearts around this concept of change and adaptability. I'm speaking with Michael Dietrich Chastain, who is the CEO of ARC Integrated, an organizational consulting and professional coaching practice. Michael is an author, coach, facilitator, and speaker. His work focuses on peak performance for leaders, teams, and cultures. His writing has been featured on Time, Money, entrepreneur, and the Washington Post. His new book, Changes, The Busy Professional's Guide to Reducing Stress, Accomplishing Goals, and Mastering Adaptability, released in 2019. And we're really pleased to have him on the show today. Michael, welcome to Rebel Pernuber Radio. Thank you so much, Ralph. Great to be here with you. Great to have you. And it's really a, a super time of the year. We're just kicking off a new year. And so uh, thinking about goals and resolutions and our vision, all the things that we want to accomplish and Mm -hmm. um, whether or not we're going to get there really has to do with our ability to change, to adapt and to lead our people as well as lead ourselves from where we are to where we want Mm -hmm. to be. You are um, right on the uh, on the forefront and the front lines of helping to create this kind of an atmosphere and a culture in the organizations that you work with. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in this line of work. What is your story? Sure. Yeah. Happy to. Well, my, my whole career has been spent in, in human development in some capacity. So working with human beings on how they create change in their life, uh, both professionally and personally. And so when I was in undergrad, I set a trajectory for what's called industrial organizational psychology, which is essentially the the psychology of business and human systems. And so did the coursework and did the internships and uh, prep for that and got a job out of college as a consultant for a company and did some leadership uh, coaching and some account management and sales. And it was a great start. And it really just inspired me to take a kind of a deeper dive into the hows and whys of what we do as humans. So I went back and got a master's in counseling and then worked as a psychotherapist in mental health for a number of years, saw a wide range of changes and challenges that, uh, that people face from those that have severe and persistent mental health disorder to, you know, addiction to going through kind of general life change, death, divorce, birth, things like things that nature. And, um, was in that world for a number of years and, and still had this interest in business and systems. And so made a pivot back to the corporate world in uh, 2012, I guess, and uh, was there for a number of years doing doing training and again leadership development coaching, and uh, started my own business a few years after that, and am now uh, working with teams, leaders, and cultures to help them become uh, peak performing. Typically, what we do is uh, we're working in the context of softer skills like emotional intelligence or communication or the interpersonal dynamics of uh, of human beings, and so that's the that's the thirty thousand foot view. 
Yeah, I, well, I, I really love that. I think that your journey and your path uh, really illustrates the strength of your own adaptability muscle. You've you've pivoted and you've uh, done this and done that. Everything is building towards what you're doing today. Um, who was mm-hmm. the ideal organization for you to to work with? What does a, a typical client look like? Yeah, sure. So the the clients that we that we really are passionate about working with are the ones that have either already currently have an emphasis in in what's called the quadruple bottom line. So that's an emphasis of of profit, of course, but also people, purpose, and planet. So they're invested in developing the people in their system. They're invested in having some kind of purpose or intention of their organization or business. And then the planet aspect is having some kind of sustainability model that that they put kind of equal energy and resource to all of these all of these bottom lines. And so that's the that's the ideal client. And if you know, if a client doesn't currently identify with those those multiple bottom lines, you know, and they're interested in it, our hope is to to work with them in in creating kind of a paradigm like that. Yeah, I, I really lo- I love frameworks. I love I love anytime we can take uh, words and concepts and fit them together into a way that makes sense. So I love that quadruple P you just shared with us: profit. There you people. go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> profit, it. people, That's purpose, it. and planet. I I really like that. And you know, I I think. Um, Maybe if a if an organization is hitting three out of four, maybe they've they've got profit people and purpose, and they know they need to do something planet wise, but they aren't quite there yet. You could probably help them to structure their organization to to take that into account. Yeah, absolutely. And and oftentimes what we find is you know we we might not be the experts in sustainability models, but we're often able to find expertise through the various networks of people involved to where to where really any any problem or challenge can be, can be solved. And so, so yeah, absolutely connect them to the resources when necessary. So let's talk about change because change is the one thing that never changes. It is the, it is the <laughs> one right. constant. Um, and, and I remember, you know, starting out so many years ago, for example, in online marketing back in the day when, uh, I'm going to date myself here, but back when, uh, uh, Google AdWords first rolled out and you could buy a click for a penny and, and it was, you know, it was just, Wonderful. And uh, I thought this is too good to be true. And it, it was too good to be true because eventually they evolved. They changed their model. And, you know, now it's maybe 10, 15, 25 dollars per click. So uh, we, we mm-hmm. like to imagine a world where things don't change because we like figuring things out and then we want to keep them the way they are. But uh, one thing that um, is one thing that never changes is that everything changes. So um, and yeah. as we're thinking, thinking about that and about building our adaptability muscle, um, that's got to be a, a big concern with a lot of the organizations that you're working with. But what would you say is, is the biggest challenge you see when you're helping these organizations to become more uh, peak performing and, and to really uh, do exceptionally well in these quadruple P areas? Sure. A couple of things come to mind. You know, one is one is just the the simple embracing of the fact that in order to be successful, we have to consistently kind of iterate and understand that the things will develop and evolve. And and that goes not only for systems of business, but for us as human beings. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would I would add to that specifically in our current time frame that we're in. You know, we're in this this kind of unique time in human history where technology is moving at a rate that has never been seen before and healthcare and culture and all, you know, it's almost, it's almost as if the requirement to manage change and to manage adaptability is needed now more than ever because of this kind of uniqueness that we're in. So, so I think first is just the mental hurdle of embracing the fact that we need to continue to change and evolve as human beings. And then to get a little bit more, um, tactful about it, you know, one of the things that we really encourage, uh, clients to embrace is this connectivity between all the aspects of our lived experience as a way to become more adaptable. So understanding that if we want to become the best leaders, if we want to become the best employee or team member, it requires us to look at, 
you know, not only our habits at work, but maybe the, our thinking processes and maybe how we take care of ourselves, how we take care of our bodies and maybe our interpersonal relationships, our emotional lives, or, you know, the environments that we're surrounding ourselves in all of these various aspects of our lived experience will either stunt our ability to be adaptable or encourage. And so this interconnectivity is something that, um, that we use the strategy, but also find it to be super, uh, successful in the work that we do. Very exciting. And I, and I really love your background that you've got the psychotherapy background. So you can get inside the head and the heart of people to better, un, to better help them to understand why they do the things they do. And then that's why, it. why do they do the things they do at work? And that's a very different environment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's the small encouragements that really make, uh, can make drastic changes. And so for instance, you know, I, I think a lot of times businesses and certainly humans can get really attached to tradition, right? And there is, there is a certain danger in that, you know, we, we do this thing because we've always done it and that's, that's why we do it because we've always done it. Right. And so the simple critical questioning of, you know, why we're, we're engaging in the practices and strategies that we are and really kind of running a, running a fine cone through them to understand just a little bit more critically about the hows and whys of what we're doing can be super valuable because it can, it can unearth practices that really have no, no foundation for reason. If that makes mm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's the integration of r rational thought and emotional um, experience and, and how we feel. Absolutely. And it, it doesn't always make sense. And that's that's one of the great um, challenges, I think, of, of working with people. And I'm, I'm a I'm, I guess I would consider myself a behavioral uh, scientist in the sense that I think people are wonderfully complex and and often behave mm -hmm. in unpredictable ways <laughs> that, that <laughs> you, right. you can't That's always right. agree. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so <laughs> as we, we've kind of introduced this topic as building your adaptability muscle. And uh, if, if we go with that analogy, then it implies that we all have this muscle that we need to work at it and develop it. And the more we use it, the stronger it becomes, but walk us through a, a process of, of how we can become more, uh, how, how we can build our adaptability muscle and, um, and kind of flow through these changes in a way that is challenging, but not disruptive to the organization. Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to give three, you know, very, very simple kind of high level tips that people could put into action immediately. Um, Perfect. And, and I will say with the caveat that, you know, to, to build any skill, I think also requires us to ask the question of what's, what's preventing us from getting there. Like in this case, what's preventing me from being adaptable, right? And so that, that question is going to be different for everybody. So I would encourage folks to, to ask themselves that, but the three tips that, that you think we can all apply to, to find good results. Number one is, um, just to get more feedback. And so we find this, this process extremely helpful for the leaders and teams that we work with. And that could look like doing a, a 360 evaluation, which is a, I'm sure a lot of listeners know about, but for those that don't is a tool that essentially offers uh, a questionnaire to multiple people in your sphere. And then you get back this data set to understand, you know, what are my strengths? What are my challenges? What are the perceptions that people have that I might not be aware of? So feedback is the first tip. Uh, the second one is, is asking more questions. And so I think there's a lot to be gained from taking on like a, like a coaching mentality instead of a, like a, like a commander mentality. Hmm. So whenever we, you know, think we have the, the best advice to give or the, or the thing we need to, to take charge in asking questions can be a powerful uh, pivot point for yeah, folks it, instead of barking orders out. Yeah, people, right? that's right. That's right. <laughs> I love that uh, coach yeah. versus commander. That that's a great uh, a, a great visual and, and a great way to to think about that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and we um it, it, that's interesting. That that in and of itself is a is another muscle to build. But uh, with practice, you can get really good at asking better questions. Hmm. And then lastly, I'll say, and again, I know people have heard this before, but um, having a very uh, predictable and consistent self-care routine of sorts. And that could mean, you know, it, it could mean weightlifting, it could mean yoga, it could mean jogging or running or some meditation, mindfulness practice, you know, some kind of time for self. And 
The reason I, I say that, Ralph, is because one of the things that we see is so consistent in this time of rapid change and, and rapid demand is stress. Mm. And when we're, when our stress is not managed, our ability to be adaptable, to be creative, to think critically really goes out the window. And so managing stress in my, in my opinion and, and the work that I do is of the primary importance. I, I think that is so powerful to consider. Um, one reason why we may be resisting change and our adaptability muscle may be weak is because we're so stressed out. We have mm-hmm. not taken the time or the, the attention to ourselves. And so this talk of, of change or pivoting or adapting at work, it just adds another layer of stress to us because we're, it, it really reveals that we're not um, doing a, a good enough job managing our own selves and taking care of ourselves. Otherwise, we would be more resilient and more open and see it more of uh, exploring new opportunities instead of, oh, no, here's another change that I'm going to have to figure out. There you go. Exactly. And it's and it's interesting how these things are are connected too. you know, when you look at the research around productivity and effectiveness at work. You know, none of it, none of it points to the fact that the more hours we work, the more effective we become, Hmm. you know, it really, really points to the opposite that productivity really wanes at a certain tipping point. And so the, it's a bit of a paradox though, because you need to think the more hours I put in, the the better, the better I become, the more, the more work I get done, but there's a really a limit to that. And I think part of that comes from the fact that, you know, when we, when we are working these, you know, 70, 80 hour work weeks, our ability to ask the better questions and to think critically and to make the moves that will 10 X the results, you know, we don't have the capacity to really, to really work in that way. But when we're taking good care of ourselves, we're able to, you know, really use that creativity and adaptability muscle that can help us make the decisions that might require less work in the long run, if that makes sense. That does make sense. And um, I'm, I'm just curious if um, if we reduce the number of hours per week uh, instead of 40 hours, what if we all got paid the same? So no reduction in salary, but we only worked 30 hours a week instead of 40. And we figured out a way to be more uh, relaxed and more playful and more creative and therefore more productive in those 30 hours and uh, maybe spend 10 hours a week on uh, extra self-care or something. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, um, I think that, you know, we can, we can definitely create more, uh, more interesting solutions and healthier systems of people when we are, you know, taking care of ourselves and, and, you know, managing our stress levels, um, as far as like the amount of time per week. Um, you know, I don't know. I think that, I think that part, part of that is dependent upon the culture of the work environment, right? So it might be that there's all sorts of interesting dynamics at play with some of these, some of these companies out there that, you know, they've, they have embedded into their culture time, to, you know, network and connect with people or time to play or, you know, hours embedded into the week where it's just creativity hours. The aesthetics of the, of the buildings might be conducive to more play and more creativity. So I think, you know, I think part of it is dependent upon what is, what is the culture and and the aesthetic of, of the organization. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? And each organization is like, like an individual entity. They all have their own personality, their own culture, their own, um, Good habits, bad habits, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. I, that's why it's, I'm so fascinated with with this work. Is to your point, it, you know, every every system of people is so unique and so fascinating and diverse. It, uh, yeah, it makes it may, <laughs> makes for some fun days. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, speaking of which, you you have a variety of um, professional coaching as well as organizational consulting solutions. And I mentioned your book, Changes. The Busy Professional's Mm -hmm. Guide to Reducing Stress, Accomplishing Goals, and Mastering Adaptability uh, that was recently released. How would working with someone like you really help an organization to improve more rapidly as opposed to trying to to figure this stuff out by themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So in my experience, you know, uh, there there are a lot of things that can be done on our own. 
And, you know, I think that, that the real advantage of hiring any kind of professional, whether that's a mentor or a coach or a therapist or really any kind of helping professional is that it allows r- rapid, uh, rapid improvements, right? Meaning that when we, when you have someone in your corner that can, ask better questions, hold you accountable, make observations that maybe others would be unwilling to make, um, offer, you know, best practices for how human systems work at when they are peak performing, you know, all of those things can rapidly increase the amount of time it takes to create environments that, um, you know, it might take longer on your own. And so, so that, that's, that's generally my opinion is that people could, figure things out on their own, but, um, hiring us rapidly increases the time in which, and the money in which that they would, they would spend otherwise. Well, I mean, that's the key, isn't it? Time is money and you know, you, you can waste a lot of time and money uh, trying to figure these things out on your own. And, and my consulting mantra is if, if you could have done it by yourself, you would have already done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's interesting, Ralph. I would, I would agree with that too. The other, you know, the other differentiator we have and the, you know, the thing that we're often hired for is that, you know, there's, there's clear science and there's clear approach to how people are adaptable and how human systems work at their highest functioning levels. And there are essentially recipes for that. So I think for a number of leaders and a number of organizations that don't understand what is really effective communication look like, how do we resolve conflict in a way that's rapid and effective? How do we crowdsource wisdom from our, from our culture so that everybody's engaged and excited and, you know, inspired to be there? There are recipes for these things. And so for those organizations and leaders that don't have the recipe, that's the value that we bring. Yeah. So you've got the cookbook with all the recipes and the ingredients and everything time tested. And so we don't have to go. try to figure there the stuff go. out as we go. And, you know, uh, then I think the the real danger is that our people become guinea pigs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Great, great point. Yeah. And I've certainly seen, <laughs> certainly seen that too. And it's, uh, yeah, every, everybody suffers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael, what are you working on right now? That's got you really excited. Oh man, there's a, there's a few things. So the, um, the launch of the book has been, has been a ton of fun. And, um, I can, if you'd like, I give a quick kind of synopsis of that I've been doing a lot of speaking on the book. It's taken me around the country and that's been, that's been a lot of fun. Sure. Um, so yeah, so I can, I can say just a, a, a short, uh, intro to that, which is a number of years ago, I started to ask myself this question of, you know, what are the, what are the things that always come up with clients, whether it's a leader or it's a team or an organization or an individual in which they're trying to achieve change, but they're, there's something that's holding them back. And what are the key elements that all the clients have gone through after working with thousands of clients in mental health, consulting, coaching, and, and Ralph, I landed on these seven areas of our lived experience that I've seen consistently be the predictors of effective change or adaptability and when ignored the, uh, the hurdles that we all face. And so Mm. essentially the, the book is, is about that. It's about these, these seven areas in our life that when optimized increase our ability to manage change effectively and reduce stress and accomplish what we want to. And so, um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of speaking on the book. I'm actually, after we get done here, I'm going out to an event tonight. So that's been a lot of, a lot of fun. And then, um, there's another product that we're releasing in Q1, which I'm really excited about, which is a card deck of 49 questions. So you've got these seven dimensions in our lived experience. There's seven questions per dimension. Card deck's kind of related to the book. And um, again, it's a tool to help us uh, individually and together ask ourselves and each other better questions so that we can become more adaptable and achieve what we want to in life. And so I'm, I'm really excited for the release of that product as well. Sounds like you've got a lot of um, really helpful resources that I think many of our listeners will be interested in. And you can connect with Michael at um, at the website, arcintegrated.com. And we'll have that um, link on the Rebel Perdurer website as well. Uh, Michael, I appreciate you being on the show and, and sharing your wisdom and your experience with us. I think it's really uh, a, a great time to be thinking about this and um, for any organization as uh, we begin to chart our course for the next 12 months and beyond. So I, I really appreciate you um, 
you sharing your your experience with us. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to leave our listeners with? Well, for, first, I'll just say, you know, thanks so much, Ralph. It was great to connect with you today. And as far as final invitations, um, you know, I would just encourage people to, you know, continue to invite this this question of, you know, how are the various aspects of my lived experience impacting my ability to create what I want, my ability to be an effective leader, and um, my ability to create and maintain positive change. And so I'll, I'll leave people with that invitation. Perfect. Perfect. Michael Dietrich Chastain is the CEO of ARC Integrated, an organizational consulting and professional coaching practice. Michael is an author, a coach, a facilitator, and speaker whose work focuses on peak performance for leaders, teams, and cultures. You can find out more at arcintegrated.com. Michael, thanks again for being on Rebelpreneur Radio today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.